The really big difference between a large bonsai and a showhand bonsai is the amount of soil available. Of course also the size of the tree, but the soil amount makes a difference because you have less roots to support the small tree and the soil would dry up so much faster than from a bigger pot. In midsummer, when the sun is strong and there is a little wind, a tree like this will dry out very fast. Some trees are of course more dry tolerant than others and even like right now it begins to rain, this will not be enough for a small bonsai like this. As you can imagine, all of these leaves will cover the pot and when it rains it will just go outside the pot. And uh, as a big difference for a tree living in nature, in the ground, the water will not reach the roots because there is no way the roots can grow out of the pot. So, rain will not go necessarily into the pot. Even on a rainy day you may have to water. So you have to be careful about watering maybe twice a day in the summer heat and place the trees in a humid environment. You can build a tray underneath so you have some humidity from a water level just below the pot and that will help the evaporation from being too strong and the tree from drying out. It is summertime and it is obvious that this tree has grown too far. It is a Japanese maple, a an Acer palmatum, and uh, it has been allowed to grow some of these long shoots. And uh, it looks silly of course, but the reason I have done this and not just continuously trimmed it through the season and kept it neat, is to allow it to grow some and speed up some health of the uh, roots. If you do not allow a tree to grow from time to time, you will not add the necessary photosynthesis and you will not give it a rest to add some vigor to the tree. If you keep pruning it, it is like uh, keep punching a child, it will be uh, sad and it will sit in a corner and cry. And the same thing will happen with this tree, if I keep pruning it, it will weaken and it will just uh, die off slowly over time. So let it grow a little and then trim it back. As you can see there's still organic fertilizers and they have to stay there for maybe 14 days or 3 weeks more and then they will be replaced with some fresh fertilizers. What I do is that I find an offspring of this very strong shoot and cut it back to somewhere where I want some new growth. And I have other ones here, so I take this one out and I take another one here where it divides and cut it just above. So new buds will appear here. I will take the top leaf off so the growth duration goes out. Here I will trim it back to this, you can see, weak part and let this come forward. And so we go on, take the strongest off where we find we need some new growth. This is a strong growth too. I take it back here and we'll have something to grow here. We'll just keep it in the shape it is and just want to redirect some growth and adjust these strong growing shoots so they don't take away the energy from the inner part. I want to open up a little too to get some light inside and make the tree denser. So I just remove what is elongating around here and this will just be a partial step of the summer trimming because we are not doing any kind of styling here. We are just adjusting the energy and letting some light inside. Here I have a shoot I need to reposition and therefore I will do a little summer trimming and summer wiring. Here is a dead part. Remove it and let this come down and replace it. And I have some uh, old wiring here we have to remove too because it has sit been sitting there long enough. And I will use a small wire cutter to cut this wire off. I will not dewire it by trying to turn it in the opposite direction because 
then I risk to break some of these small branches and new shoots. So use a wire cutter instead. As always, better safe than sorry. And I just need a thin wire to wire this branch. And normally summer wiring is not recommendable because you cannot see the branch structure very good. But when you want to make small adjustments, this is one way to do it. And I'm attaching the wire to another branch and then around the thicker branch. And you can see it's a little bit troublesome getting around in here because there's this big leaf mass and I have to take care not to break anything. It is filled with water at this time of the year and will easily break. The position is better and in two or three weeks I have to maybe cut this off again when this branch has elongated so it the wire is not cut into the branch, or it's actually the opposite, the branch is swelling around the wire. A little more trimming of some of the large leaves, so we only have the necessary smaller leaves and some light inside. And I have other maples that need the same trimming, that is pretty clear and exactly the same method, taking off very long branches and here is an old leaf that has been cut in half early on simply to adjust the energy of the tree so you have approximately the same leaf sides all over but i will remove it now because now new buds are coming here they can take over new leaves here i take out the middle so i divide the branch structure and i take the left leaf out so I have a growth direction in this direction. All the time getting the growth to grow outwards and into empty spaces. And there's a lot of leaf on this one so I have to reduce it pretty heavily so we can get new dense growth inside. And we have crossing branches. I will remove the strongest one and let the weaker one take over so I keep it short all the time. And when I say weak I don't mean an unhealthy branch, just a smaller and shorter branch that will be competed out by heavy growing branches, strong branches. Therefore the strong branches are the ones who have to be removed to adjust the energy in the tree and ensure that Nothing is competing something out that you want to keep. And we want a healthy tree. And here I will not wire anything because it simply is impossible to do it without damaging the branches. So it's just about trimming at this time of the year in the summer period and feeding it well. And as you can see the growth is very healthy and that is because it has been feed it very well with organic fertilizers. And if you should ask me if there is an exact recipe on how to remove these uh, branches and what leaves to choose to, to remove to strengthen others, it's mostly about a sense of it. You cannot make a precise rule or precise guideline about this. You have to to use your common sense and see what works and with experience you will learn how to adjust these things. I just continue this work without removing too much because I want to keep the energy in the tree and as you can see it is very very dense already and it will be easier to trim it more precisely in the winter time when it is dormant and no leaves are on. Like with any other bonsai, it is very important to keep the trees healthy growing. And you do that by taking care of the right amount of feeding. I place with a two centimeters distance in spring and after midsummer, where the trees need a pause too, a organic fertilizer around the pot, so I keep the trees strong growing. Spring is also time to fertilize your trees. 
For some seasons I have used uh, a liquid fertilizer, a chemical fertilizer, but this seems to break down the soil structure too fast. So instead I'm using an organic fertilizer of a very good quality. And this is uh, a biogold fertilizer, but you can use whatever you want. The most important thing with this is that it has the right amount of the different nutrients. So here we have a NPK 5.5, 6.5 and 3.5. And that means that it is equally supporting the growth of branches and the roots instead of many f uh, liquid fertilizers that are used for greenhouses and so on are focusing on flower development. But here we want the roots and the branches to develop and uh, this biogold is balanced for this. Use whatever brand you like. The most important thing is that you feed your bonsai well. Place the pellets with one piece for each centimeter approximately of the length of the pot. And it also depends where it is possible to place them. If you have problems with birds putting them off, then you can uh, cover them with a net or some special customized holders that will keep them in place. But I do not have that problem here, so just press them gently into the soil and every time when you are watering, a little bit of the nutrients will be released. And if you need to, you can replace them uh, the next time. So you place them in a new place so the roots will not uh, only have the nutrients in this area. area. But when watered, the nutrients will, uh, by simple osmosis, spread them into the soil and all the roots will get some benefit from it. Continue this on the next one. And the reason why I have not put any fertilizers on yet is because if you put them on too early at the season, I missed one, it will make uh, the new growth grow too strong and you will get a too, too far distance between the internodes. And that means you have a, a too far distance between leaf and leaf pair. So if you strengthen the tree too early at the season, this is what will happen and especially with Shohen, you have to be really careful not to overfeed them too early. So now is the time. The branches have matured, the leaves have matured, so now is the time to feed for the next growth. Besides watering the Shohen very well so they do not dry out and are being damaged by that, you can place them a little bit different than larger bonsai. You have to place them in semi-shade during the hottest time of the day. This is no problem right now when I'm recording this. This is autumn and they need all the light they can get. You have to place the trees in the right environment. That means if you can make some midday shade with a net or place the trees like I have done underneath some trees then you can protect them from drying out in the middle of the day in a hot summer's day. Show he needs extra care for this. Bigger bonsai can cope with more. Select the trees you are using for showing bonsai with care, both aesthetically and regarding the care of them. This is a small cotone aster and it tolerates the soil to dry out slightly and therefore it's a very good specimen for a small marme bonsai like this one. But also the aesthetics plays a role. This one has very small leaves and that fits with a small tree. So select specimens where the leaf size or needle size fits with the size of the tree. You can use a lot of different kinds of trees. For Shohin bonsai there's much more to choose from than for larger trees because a small cotton aster like this one is difficult to find in a big size where the trunk is big enough to fit a large tree. So you have a lot to play with when you are doing Shohen Bonsai. One of my favorite things about Shohen Bonsai is the easily carrying. It is so much more fun for me to make a small Shohen bonsai that I can work with, taking it in the palm of my hand, 
watching it from every angle and work on it in a few hours. Compared to a large bonsai where you may spend one or two or three days to go through the tree wide, pinching it and so on, then it is far more easy and often more fun to do a small tree like this that you can do with a cup of coffee in an hour or two. Mm -hmm.